Have you ever met someone that seems to be exactly where they're supposed to be? Mike and Courtney Wilkinson certainly fit that bill. When we first met, definitely didn't think that it would end up here, that's for sure. Slowly but surely, she realized how serious I was. At that time, both had our separate careers. I found this place, it was the first place I found. Two or three days later, we literally knocked on the door here. And the universe wanted this for us. Two first-generation organic farmers on five acres. Actually, uh, we just expanded. Um, we're currently be about six total. About six yeah. total acres. Isn't that awesome? Is that a lot for two people? That's a yeah. lot. It is. It is a lot. It's a, a lot of the fruits and vegetables of Mike and Courtney's labor end up with Chef Francis Hogan. And you know, the farming is something that the two of them are just so incredibly passionate about. You know, it's like they eat, sleep, and breathe it. Water a Fact bit. check. Hot, but it's just different, True. Know? These aren't hot. Not hot. These are sweet. But I don't know where they get this energy. The enthusiasm is contagious, you know, and, and it gets me excited. Do you? <laughs> yeah, you know, Mike asked me, he's like, what do you want me to grow for you? And, you know, one of the things I brought up is, you know, I, I love Calabrian chilies. Oh. Uh, but not just them. I mean, we use uh, their korbachi, which is a Turkish style pepper. They do shishitos, which is, you know, always a crowd pleaser, the Jimmy Nardellos. And you know, the, the quality is second to none. You know, they, they don't rush them. You know, they're not pulling them off a vine too early. They're letting them ripen, letting them get to their peak. And you know, I think that's a really, really cool niche for them. Tell yourself you're gonna Before Mike and Courtney created their niche in the farm to table agriculture world, they had to find each other first. <laughs> yeah, we met online, dating app, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, we went on a date. And... She swiped right, no, left. <laughs> Wait, whichever, uh, which, the, good whichever the good one was. <laughs> I can't I don't even remember it's anymore. Been so long. <laughs> when you met Mike, did you think, yeah, that guy's probably a future farmer? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I have my eye on something and I'm going to get it. And that's how I married my wife. So, <laughs> uh, you know, farming was that, was, that was easy. You know, we have our issues, of course, but. What do you want? I could be a better communicator. I, so could I. <laughs> it's incredible to watch them grow. I mean, they've made such a huge leap from uh, from year one to year two. It's been, you know, really incredible. The leap from year one to year two on the farm was nothing like the leap from day jobs to a whole new way of life. We tried to plan as much as we could. Courtney was spending her days working at a school. Okay, we're just gonna see if this works. While Mike took the commute to San Francisco to his job as a building engineer. There was also my mental health that was a large part of our decision. He decided, okay, let's just go all in and find like an actual piece of land that we could start growing veggies on and here we are. <laughs> yes, sir. Although the Wilkinsons are new to full-on farming, they had some experience with urban gardening. We call ourselves YouTube farmers because when we don't know how to do something, oftentimes we'll just look it up on the internet. It's been nice to kind of be accepted into the local agricultural community, even though like we still feel like total noobs. I think there's still just such a learning curve. Good morning, social media. TGIF. Happy holidays. Innovative so-called YouTube farmers harnessing their spunk and ingenuity. We lost our well last year. Well, I guess you can't fix everything. So yeah. is it fair to say that's your, your lowest low? I think we things. all know the answer to this one. Yeah, I think COVID was kind of um, a big one. We lost um, a significant amount of restaurant accounts. That's what brought us to the farm stand. The idea had always been community. A customer come back the following Saturday and say, man, this kale was amazing. It makes it all worth it. If you could bottle that feeling and sell it at the market, it would be sold out every weekend. So these um, go to many different places besides just snacks for you, the yeah. farm, <laughs> yes. and me. Uh, where else do they go? From here, about 
100 feet over uh, to the farm stand there. I go to the grocery store, I don't know where that stuff's come from. Regular customer, Ed Thomas. Here, I do feel a connection you know, to the grower, and so it's, it's fun every week to go through this. It's not just food, but it's the source, and it's the, you know, the greater community. The pandemic farm stand pivot maintained the business and cultivated community with customers and other small businesses. We have all this space, and we don't take up all the space. So why don't we see if there's other people that are trying to get their own small business up and running? Taste them, because it's not nutty. It's not like Delta Microgreens, Gino Zertouche, is there almost every weekend. And so is Monique Delaney from Molly's Creole Kitchen. And it's all local, so it is like a community, a family. It just feels really great because you feel like you're a part of something. The, the farming practices that they're using are noble and time-honored farming practices. You know, they're, they're not reinventing the wheel, nor is any other, you know, organic farmer, nor are they trying to. They're just trying to do things the right way, which is incredibly admirable. While farm dog Callie does her zoomies, and the rest of us are on Zoom, Mike and Courtney have a few thoughts on the growth of their farm. Have you, do you have any names out there for future farmers of America? <laughs> no, it's okay. Right. <laughs> uh, we are definitely um, looking forward to, yeah. uh, to starting a family very soon um, and, and raising kids uh, in this environment. Well, until then, it's all about Cali, oh, cucumbers, and community. Oh, what a good girl. The United States Department of Agriculture reports that the average age of farmers nationwide is over 59 years old. Only 6% are in their early to mid 30s like Courtney and Mike. Can these two YouTube and Instagram farmers encourage a whole new generation to take on this noble endeavor? Let's hope so. I'm David Avery reporting from Fairfield, California's Sassoon Valley. Farm Stand Saturdays, every Saturday.